All right, here we go. It is podcasting time. Glenn Power, PowerWorks Garage is here. And that means for the next little bit, we're going to be talking about your car dilemmas, your car woes, and a big shout out to the folks at 100.3 who are listening to us. And as always, you can watch us too. Go to YouTube and look at the James Casts with an S and you can watch some of these podcasts as well. And, and of course, scroll through the rest of what we've got going on, not just here with PowerWorks, yeah. but with We Will Fix It and as well with Dr. Jenna and Doc Talk. We've got tons of content to keep you company as you're commuting from here to there. Not, not YouTube while you're commuting. <laughs> no, no. So the thing is, you put me onto YouTube because you said, hey, you know what? I listen to YouTube content. Yeah, yeah, no, that was which, it. Which I was not that guy. So yeah. I was kind of going, all right. Well, I think that was either, it was either Joe Rogan. Yeah, I think it was Joe Rogan. I think it was Joe Rogan that just got me listening to the, to listening to things on YouTube. Yeah. And it's quite interesting sometimes watching people when they're talking about it, especially when it's something like, you know, a complex issue. Yeah. And you see, you see, you see a lot from body language, don't you? Yeah. yeah. yeah a lot from uh, some, Absolutely. some people. That, and when you get in people the, being It's the faces. Thrilled. And, you know, if you're showing stuff, you can sort of look over at the cameras. You can get yeah. a get a feel for things. And and you just kind of forget the cameras are there. So, you know, you can make I sure. Don't, I, I stay. <laughs> don't look at the camera. Don't look at the camera. If I don't look at the camera, it can't see me. <laughs> no, it's, it's when you play it back and you see, oh, scratch an itch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. He saw me pick my nose. <laughs> oh, no, not again. Yeah, no, it's it's fun. So uh, what's what's going on in the shop? Actually, before I say what's going on in the shop, I mean, I know what's going on in the shop. It's looking, it's looking pretty pretty awesome. You sent me a nice little, make you a little bit homesick picture of a uh, Chevy, a GM. Yeah, GMC Sierra, yeah. Man. Just left yesterday, actually. I you could have, we could have done a walk around on it. Oh, man. that That's Canada in a... That's right there. That's Canada in the U.S. Yeah, at its best. So it was a Canadian one from. These are from Montreal. Montreal. Oh, yeah, okay. and it was ordered. So it was a, a a Sierra with a crew cab. So that's the four doors. Yeah, and a full size bed. Which which you were saying not uncommon you here. You can only get in North America, apparently. Really, you can only order that in the North American market. Okay, and then this was ordered specially, obviously. All right. In twenty twenty one. Okay. For a dealership in Montreal. And then the customer defaulted on their first payment. Oh, so they took it back. So they, they General, showed up with the tow truck and they said, it's yeah, ours. General Motors. No, they didn't even receive oh. it. <laughs> oh, okay. Default on the first payment. Yeah, sat yeah. in the lot. Because it took so long to to order. I think the payment plan kicked in before it actually arrived. Okay. Uh, so General Motors gave the dealership a support package, which basically allowed them just to sell it to get rid of it. No one's going to buy it. It was way, 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 way too high price. Well, you were showing, you were walking around. This thing was super specced. Yeah. So um, they got the they got the car and managed to sell it to someone who's exported it here, and then it was sold out of a Russell Core dealership to one of our customers who brings his Tesla in. So he's kind of offsetting <laughs> his carbon footprint, <laughs> you know, with his with his at least with his commute. Um, then he got the the roof temp put on it, so it had a big. Right. Big roof it's got tent. a camper on it, yeah. And the the bed cover, which was great with built-in storage units, the roller drawers. Those roller drawers, like, <laughs> there must have been, <laughs> the capacity on them said 85 kilos. There was easily 50 kilos in each one, and I'm talking just one finger, and it would yeah. just pull and roll out nicely on a slow stop. I've, s- I've seen folks nicely. that have those full of, you know, their 7-ups and their, their yeah. sprites and stuff, yeah. and they just roll it out. And yeah, this had go. more practical stuff in. Okay. I mean, you just use it out in the desert. You know, done. Yeah. When he got it, it had 47 miles on it. Oh, man. Literally brand new, just a year old, and it had been passed from pillar to post because nobody wanted to buy it. Yeah. Including well, the person who ordered it. <laughs> well, I, w- I was looking at, and the first thing I'm thinking is fuel prices, and that thing is going to be brutal yeah, well, at I, the fuel pump. I was excited when he said he was bringing it in it was from canada because i thought it might be diesel yeah so yes diesel yeah. proper engine yeah. but no it was the 6.2 not that there's anything wrong with that but you know we do get like we've got a couple of jeeps that i've seen from canada that are diesel and they, there is quite a taste for diesel over there but yeah. it wasn't it was the v8 petrol but still you know it was a really really cool vehicle it, really it, cool it's vehicle. just giant too and this was the other thing that when i was looking at it i was just going um can't get that thing into mall of the emirates you're gonna no. have you're gonna, <laughs> no well <laughs> ground floor only yeah. ground floor you know anything where you've got to go into a basement yeah. forget it yeah. i mean it was 
it's one of those situations. I was kind of going, yeah, this is going to be a, a crazy machine. So yeah, well, it's used it's used off road. I mean, the, yeah. like say the the guy has that which they use, and he says they use it quite often in okay. camping it. And with the roof tent on it, which is a good the roof tents are the way forward, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're a good addition to any sort of camping. Vehicle. Those have been really popular wilder nests and things yeah. in California and other and other parts of the U.S. for a long time because you're off the ground making use of. Oh, and that's why they have box cap uh, uh, over your box. You've got your your caps yeah. where you can make a you know storage area. But they've, those things been around. They just seem to really start to kick off here recently in the last five years. It so. just makes any f- any. F- physically larger vehicle is able to be a camper then because the yeah. tent's on the roof as long as the vehicle's big enough to to carry it on the roof and it's got enough grunt to move around with it and you can then climb onto the roof you're good to go so they are a good addition to an, any sort of vehicle and like say they just pop out as well so it just pops out on the roof it's not like you've got to put poles up and yeah this way and that way oh no the, the lining's inside out oh we forgot the the waterproof and all this sort of stuff it's not it just pops out of but, and box. that's the thing you don't you don't want to have any issues with this stuff no exactly so keep it simple all good fun we we've gone through a, a, a small time period of, of some great puddles and some crappy weather <laughs> and the first thing that started coming to my mind is something that you've been talking about is sensor misfiring and how people uh have, have dealt with that and and it's amazing our cars are are so electronic there are so many sensors, that, you know, vehicles get beaten up with weather, yet you start going through puddles, you start going through snow. Joey Wu has had the same issue. He's, you know, he's been driving around in a car, all sorts of sensor warnings. Car's okay, but the sensors just don't work well with the weather. No, no. I mean, you've got to, one of the, so in the hot market, which is where we are in a, in a hot region, one of the problems with, with electrical is, the heat and anything that's in direct contact with the sunlight, so the UV, breaks down the insulation on it. And a lot of the right. insulation and the, the sheathing and weatherproofing, quote unquote, gets broken down by that. So then dust, then in the last few weeks with the rain, moisture gets in. And then what happens is, if it's not an immediate issue, it's a slow, corrosive yeah. effect of the water. <laughs> now, we don't have salt on the roads here. Thankfully, thankfully. So, Although we, we do have quite a bit of, you know, if you're parking down by the beach, you do get yeah. that. And we've mentioned before, people that live by the beach, you can tell, because yeah. they do have corrosion, which is unusual for vehicles here. So that's one of the, the bigger issues. But obviously, in a colder climate, one of the issues is the water gets in, and there's salt in it, which is making it even more corrosive to the electrical terminals but also that water freezes and when mm. it freezes it expands so then you get things spread apart and cracked and broken open and that does happen quite often in a colder climate so water can be a pain but here it's the unfamiliarity with it you know people aren't used to driving in it so i was talking to dj when i arrived this morning we had the bmw that we talked about a few weeks ago yeah this is that one with that. the first lot of rain that we yeah. had yeah so that's been written off as we knew it would be, and he's had his settlement figure sent through. You know, the guy, the guy's from the UK. Uh-huh. And we don't, we know about driving in water all the time, but the difference is, it comes out of the blue here because there's no real drainage. So yeah. all of a sudden, what looks like it's just a bit of water is actually just seven, eight, even a foot deep, and it's like game over when you hit it too fast. <laughs> so you do have to. You do have to be careful. Something I'm unsure about is obviously an EV will be okay in the rain and in standing water. And obviously there's no air intake because there's no internal combustion. So you don't necessarily have to worry about the water getting into the engine because there isn't one. Right. So does that mean you can drive into a water pond, as they call them here, flat out in an EV? No issues. (laughs) heavy batteries on the bottom okay so here's the two issues we have first of all i don't i mean yeah you're not you you won't have those air intake issues you won't have some of those those challenges but any vehicle that you drive flat out into a puddle with you're going to have the potential issue of one your brakes are going to be soaked yep so there's no stopping yep two your brakes are going to be soaked 
and you could hydroplane. So now there's no stopping anyway, but your brakes aren't working well. Three, how good are your windshield wipers? Because inevitably <laughs> no, you go screaming through most. the puddle and then you can't see anything yep. and you're hydroplaning and you could on, can't put on your brakes. And the person in front of you who went through the puddle has stalled because they're not in an EV and now you've got a multi-car pileup. In the water. <laughs> in the water. And then you've hit, cracked your battery cell, and everyone in the water is getting electrocuted by 40,000 volts. It, 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 here's the second side of it, is the person on the other side of the barrier who's going the other way, when you go screaming through and you make this tidal wave tsunami of water, I saw one the other day when it was really raining. It scared me because I didn't realize it was going to happen, and it was just the car in front. You just saw this pool of water landing yeah. on it. They slammed on their brakes. They swerved a little bit. And I'm thinking, you got a lot of traffic? We got another accident there. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, we've had, it was last Friday when it really came down. I sent you a video of the hailstones, didn't oh, I? Oh, man. And it really came down, and we've had trouble in the house, and as of thousands of other people, but still, so effectively a week later, and it's been 25, 26, 27 degrees in the day, sunny, yeah. not been cloudy necessarily, so, but still a week later, there's still water stood not right. being able to drain away anywhere yeah. and it's and it's a massive not just now because of mosquitoes but it's a massive problem that the water's still standing there because well, that's, the, that's a whole other side I've, I've noticed just even around my place and i don't really have a whole bunch of standing water although there's a little bit here and there mosquitoes yeah we don't typically we have mosquitoes but not usually a lot now <sighs> there's some parts of the city and we've had to make sure of it, and we always do anyway but we've had to make sure that we're keeping windows closed yeah. during the day on the vehicles in the workshop because they just get in there and then yeah. the customer picks the car up and just gets ravaged on the way home. <laughs> so I've got no windows in mind. I get in this morning, there's right, a swarm of mosquitoes. Yeah, you're screwed. There's a swarm of mosquitoes flying around and it's just like, oh, come on. Yeah, you're screwed. You, know, you get out and you got mosquito bites on your ankles and oh, it's crazy. But yeah, water, I mean, that's a good that's a good question with the EVs. I'd love to hear from some EV owners who've been They can out go there. through. I remember, I think, you know, I, I've seen I've seen them go through, and they are. Yeah. I'd say they sell them in Europe and North America, so well, they're obviously made for the wet. But but here's the question: driving off the factory, driving out of the showroom. So you got two. How what's the what's the longevity of all the seals on everything? Because we know on a regular vehicle, yeah, that longevity. You know, you get good five, seven, ten years maybe, but after that, depending on heat, depending on things, <laughs> those seals yeah. on on everything start to go. How much of a, a seal breach do you need on an EV before you start getting some problems? Yeah, I mean, it's EVs that started it. Yeah. But now because of the sort of the Tesla kind of had the Tesla and their control screen had mm. the, it's had the iPhone effect with mobile phones all looking the same now. Like yeah. All vehicles now have everything through that one screen, <laughs> which means if you get water inside and have an electrical issue, you can't do anything. Yeah. You know, you can't turn. You can't even turn your ignition on with a manual kit. No. Even the ones where you oh, put, really? even the ones where you put the key in and turn it, like on some of the yeah, Porsche, yeah. still you still have a smart key and there's just a tab to turn. And some of the Chrysler stuff and Mercedes stuff, you can pop the button out and mm. physically put the key. Even on those, you're not physically turning anything mechanical. It's still an electric on, ah. electronic switch. And there's no bypass somewhere no. hidden in the boot underneath. No. no. So we had a call from a guy. What do people do in an Alpha? That oh, there's a problem said, right there. Well, <laughs> straight away. <laughs> Do you, he'd, he'd driven into some water uh -huh. and the engine had stopped and it wouldn't start. Oh, no. So it was game over because he'd been trying to start it. So that screwed it. He, even if he was looking, it just stalled it. He's now screwed it because he's tried to start it with water in the cylinders. But anyway, um, can you come out and get me out of the water? Well, no, because those need to be running to get into neutral. How ridiculous. <laughs> Otherwise, you've got to get underneath them and manually shift them. Yeah. So he had two choices. It was either A, it was only a small, it was a Julietta. It was okay. either A. Those, those are fun. Wait till the water drains away, then we'll jack it up and get underneath it. Or B, we'll just have to drag it Yeah. with a winch and drag it. Yeah. And, you know, risk damaging the tires and anything else, including the point of the vehicle where we put the towing eye in to winch it from. So. What did he go for? He went for B. Okay. And um, I said I wasn't going to get involved with it which we didn't. He then called me and said, we've done it. And I didn't even take the vehicle in because I knew it needed an engine. Yeah. And I explained to the guy, well, look, I don't know that I'm going to find an engine. This is quite a rare car. Plus all the other parts that you're going to need, anything electrical that's broken and damaged, I'm not going to get secondhand or new. Yeah. So 
it's going to be 40k and i can't do it oh man so what did he what's what did he do i don't know you, i'm not, I'm not sure know. really i don't know we, we was he, he must have been a little bit angry or was he <laughs> the, the problem is right now he said i drove into water okay could you not stop no why <laughs> Couldn't stop or didn't want to stop. Why? It was the one way and there was cars behind me. Uh, Where are those cars that were behind you now? Yeah. Well, they turned around. Yeah, exactly. So you could have. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And, and look, we've all been there, made mistakes, but the one driving into water, really, I just don't get it. Yeah. I just don't get it. And maybe it's just because, like say, we're from countries where yeah. there is often rain, heavy rain and standing water and, you know. I I think we, we drive through standing water, but even in, in our countries where we get heavy rain, we don't get these literally ponds of water. This, it drains away better. It drains away much yeah, better. Yeah. So we, we just, and, and I think everyone thinks, well, I've got, uh, I hear it from everyone. I've got a four wheel drive or I've got all wheel yeah. drive and I've got great tires. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't mean it's not going to damage your vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, it's crazy. I, I, and I don't, I uh, don't get it. I don't get it. The, the guys on the underpasses on the Emirates Road that were, obviously they'd all, yeah, all the U-turn underpasses they'd all blown and uh, flooded, and they closed one of them. Oh no! But everyone decided to just go through the cones anyway of and go course. through. And yeah. it's like no one tells me what to do. Okay, guys, <laughs> whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, start but, passing out cards. Oh, by yeah, the way, exactly. Yeah, just leaving a lot of business cards down there. But it, it's. It, it literally isn't even worth taking the risk, I don't think. Nowadays, there's too many electronics on a car to go wrong. And we started off with talking about sensors failing. I mean, you can have a fault with the ambient air temperature sensor. So you get a display on your dashboard in most cars now that tells you how what the temperature is outside. Yeah, That can go high or low resistance, whichever way around it goes, and alter that temperature. And that will affect how your car runs. It will affect your AC, whether it works or not. So why why risk it? That's at the very front, typically, of any vehicle. Mm. The first thing that's going to hit any water. So why risk it? It's not yeah. it's not worth yeah, yeah. it's not worth the risk. If 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 you're going to go through the water, make sure you've seen someone do a bit of a guinea pig running <laughs> trump first, <laughs> and just try and take the the sort of shallowest route and go as slow as you can with a constant speed. You know, yeah. it's, it's the foot down attitude that is the problem because it just sucks it in. I have been noticing a lot of people, uh, there's, there's more speed humps going up all over the place. Yeah. And, and I'm still noticing a lot of people who are uh, testing the suspension of their vehicles. I don't think people realize the damage you can cause by going over these speed humps excessively fast. No. No, I mean, I, I think we all have. We've all hit a speed bump that we didn't necessarily know was there. Or we'd <laughs> I, like, look down because something had happened and we've hit it. But there's people that seem to actually take it as like a challenge, see how fast I, they can go. I was in the passenger seat of the, the red Jeep, the, the Wrangler, and my wife was driving. It was, it was like, I was like in a roller coaster. I was, I was also with fear as we're driving at one point and she's going and she's accelerating and I'm looking and I, I'm see, I see the speed hump coming. And I said, uh, I had to point it out after there's a speed hump coming, you know, and we, we, I think we got air going off this thing <laughs> and it was like, Oh my, wow. Yeah. And you know, as, as the, the car came down, I sort of went, Oh, I think I got to go see Glenn now about the dampers. I'm so pretty sure my dampers need to be replaced. One of the again. problem with the dampers is like, they're doing a job. They obviously have a job to do, but they have a range of motion. Yeah. Dampers might also be known as shocks yeah, yeah. to other, to yeah. others. So the range of motion is not necessarily that they can't go as far as they need to go, but they yeah. haven't been going that far. So yeah. as the damper, as the piston effectively, what it is, it, it slides into the body of the damper. Every time it goes in and out, it's so well sealed that it effectively cleans it. So right. it's, it leaves a bit of a, uh, it, it does wear, it does okay. wear. Yeah, yeah. And we're talking about. I mean, it's about, got rubber, it's got oil. Yeah, in we're it. talking it's... about, you know, f- fractions of millimeters, but we're still talking differences. Yeah. And then, all of a sudden <laughs> fully extends you go full extension full compression yeah that is what damages them then they start to leak yeah. and you might not notice it straight away but six seven eight months later you have a problem with one that you wouldn't have had a problem with like I say we've all hit them by accident but there are people yeah. that just don't care and look there isn't you know the other problem and i and, I, and look I'm, i've got the the excuse people can use because i've i've been doing a lot of watching of these speed ups, especially when I'm a passenger. <laughs> so saying, making excuses. They, they're not uniform. No. 
No. So they're, you know, whether they're long uptake, outtakes, whether they're, they're pointed, mm. it seems even in a, a parking garage where you think they're buying from the same supplier, they're all different. Yeah. And so you just don't know. You think, oh, I can't, I can't hit this one at 10 kilometers. Hour. No, you got to crawl over that one. But the thir- next three, you can go 30 kilometers an hour over and you're going to be okay. Yeah. They got to slow down. So it's zero uniformity. Yeah. I like the idea of, and I don't know if anyone's ever done this, but you know when you watch um, sports games, so not so much football or soccer, but like American football, and we get it on rugby as well in the UK, where they'll have the sponsor of the game will have like a... <laughs> A, a, a painting on the grass yeah. which from the main camera view looks like a stood up banner but when right. you actually get over it it's just in perspective yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like a really stretched out I like the idea of that but putting like pictures of old ladies and kids and yeah, walking the absolutely. dog instead of a speed bump or on a bit of a speed bump to yeah. make people think because that's ultimately yeah. what you're trying to do right yeah, absolutely you're just trying to protect people that maybe trying to cross the road there's yeah. no other reason to slow down it's the fact that it's an area where people might be crossing the road or there's likely to be queuing traffic yeah I don't, I don't know what it's like in the uk i know if you're you're at home you know you're you're crossing the road and you you just step off the curb cars just tend to stop yeah so it, it, it's a weird one because I've more than once I've been, cause here they don't stop. So, yeah. you know, you've even got at a crossing, yeah, even at a crossing, yeah. you've got to be looking, yeah. you've got to be vigilant. You, yeah. you have to be an active pedestrian here. And I know many times I'll get back to Canada and I'll be going to cross the street and I'll, I'll be just be standing close to cross thinking, Oh, I'm never getting across. <laughs> I'm going to get wiped out. Cars on both sides stops. It's like Stopped parting of the sea. Yeah. It's like, wow, this is, and, and sometimes they're too nice because you're not ready to cross yet, but they're waiting for you. It's like, yeah. no, no, no. It's, it's okay. Yeah. You're, yeah. So it's, you know, different cultures. Yeah. It's the, 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 the speed, obviously, look, we, I run a business, right, that makes yeah. money fixing cars. So people hitting speed bumps flat out. Yeah, you want the suspensions to be off. But the problem is, <laughs> the problem is that the people that don't fix it, so the people that keep yeah. doing it, then they wear the tires out. And yeah. then that vehicle is immediately unsafe on the road. Yeah. And then my family's on the road. Yeah. Exactly. And they're having an accident because yep. someone in front of them's tires have worn out yep. or blown out. And and that's the genuine. Plus, it's such a waste. Like, it's such a waste of tires. A, a very good friend of mine has just purchased a, and put online, a tire recycling plant in Omar Quain. We might, oh, nice. I might see if we can go one day. Yeah, let's do that. I'd love That'd to be go interesting. There. And they use a lot of it. So they'll, they shred them. Yep. They'll take the steel out. That goes recycling. The rubber then goes to make new tires or sometimes road surface or whoever yep. wants to buy it. So that's great. But some of it goes in an incinerator. Yeah. People just wasting the tires. You like you, you can literally we're not if we were gonna do an experiment, we could today put a brand new set of tires on your Jeep and then do the wheel alignment so it was one with one degree. One degree out on the toe yeah. on the front, right? And by next week, you'd need new tires. Oh. 100. And, and if we set the rear, so if we set the rear, if the toe was adjustable, I can't think on those, but set the I, rear yeah. camber out, all four tires would be needed by next oh, week. Oh, man. See, it's, it's important to keep an eye on these. So it's like, it's a gen, like not just a waste of money, a waste of time, I mean, yeah. to change your tires, but a waste of materials and it's just polluting and it's yeah. not great. So, you know, there's a genuine reason on every whichever metric you want to use your own time your own money your own safety everyone else on the road safety in the planet so yeah. those, there's no good speed to go over speed bump. <laughs> no the, speed bumps are the, not cars were the, never designed for speed bump <laughs> no you gotta slow down to, and i do i just slow down to a crawl now over all of them yeah people are looking at me like what are you doing it's like you know what that's not worth it i don't want to yeah. even bottom out yeah there's no good speed you, no you're still they're, doing they're some reason. form of damage or yeah. wear excessive wear by going over it slow but it's better and breaking that, something that's the whole point and doing yeah. an immediate issue with it yeah oh another jeep has passed the rta inspection once again unbelievable 2008 and and they did make note of the <laughs> rope and the duct tape that was holding parts of the vehicle make together. note as in they, certificate this no, is they didn't amazing. write it down but they did mention it to me laughing says uh it, like the like the customization touches you've got on your vehicle the, nice. the guy did notice that one of the pieces of duct tape that's holding the rear light over the license plate, which they do check to see that it's working. He did notice. He said, I think you got to put some more of that on because it seems to be coming off. And I thought, that's very nice of you to tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. hoping they'd note it on the thing, <laughs> but no, they wouldn't. 
didn't want to go that far. Insufficient duct tape. Yeah. That's probably not a, an option for them to select, is it? No. I, it was funny. I, I thought that I... Has I, it ever I, failed? Uh, it, yeah, it did fail once. Oh. And, oh no, this is why it failed. This is, uh, this is back when I was taking my, my vehicles over to Sam. Uh, I can't even remember the name of his garage. Rage. Oh, Rage. That's rage. right. Yeah, yeah, Rage. So for the longest period, we were there, and, and then Sam moved back to the back to the Alpha Tame. And I said, well, I was coming here because of you, Sam. I know you got great guys. <laughs> and I, I know he's got great guys at Rage. They're, they're fantastic. But I said, like, really, I'm coming here because of you. So there was no chance I was going to the, the dealer. So it's, uh, then we made the migration over to you guys which we'd been doing the podcast forever so i did feel yeah we've been on the radio for a while yeah and it was and you know people have said well why weren't you going to glenn i said the simple reason is is we'd always said on the radio the car once you got somewhere you can go though just stick with it because why else why change you know and so there was reason to change and we did and and it's 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 been happy days ever since but so i i went to got my car inspected i can't remember which year it was and the front hood some of the paint, the, some of the clear oh, coat was coming that. off yeah. and they failed me. They said, oh no, you got it's it. the red one. Yeah. They failed me. And I noticed now it's been years on it and I noticed there's some cracks in that paint. I remember it's, that. It's like eight years. And I looking at going, oh man, I hope it doesn't start to peel off. But they, they failed me for that. And ever since I've seen so many cars with peeling paint yeah. and things going, really? <laughs> like that was a re- of all, you know, the fact that I've got rope holding the fuel filter, you know, the, the gas tank. The carbon thing is being held on by rope. Yeah. That's not an issue, but a little bit of peeling paint on the front hood is the issue. I know oh, that's, yeah. Hey, it's where we are. <laughs> Just where we are. <laughs> I mean, look, I think it's certainly the couple of things you've mentioned there, we would have failed an MOT on. Yeah. And not necessarily because there was actually a specific parameter, but it would just be in the case of, well, it's not exactly safe, is it? No. I mean, it should be at least be metal strap. <laughs> it, should, it should at least be the normal silver duct tape for the light. But, you know, it's it's good that it's tested. It's good yeah. that it's passed. You're going to get it sorted. And then yeah, another year out of it. Yeah. Get and, to the half the, a million. There, there were, or almost there. There were, there were folks who were getting failed. Tires was a big one. So they're really looking at tires. Uh, what else did they fail someone for? Someone had a big crack on their windshield. They failed them for that. Because yeah. I was standing around. So, and somebody got fa- oh um brakes because they do that braking test right yeah and so someone there was a car also there that got failed for that so there were people they were looking at them they were serious about yeah, it yeah and yeah it, although there was this funny one because after you know you, you get your registration card which i don't actually know if you need but the physical card mm. and so I've, I've done all the stuff i've paid i'm then i gotta get the car and the guy says oh no you gotta get another sheet of paper you gotta get another ticket for that so I go get the other ticket. And I'm looking. There's like 20 people in front of me. And I'm going, I just need the card. And I'm look. I'm so I'm standing there watching, standing yeah, behind yeah. one of the, the folks watching. And we're talking. They've put me in the line to get my card. Where you go if you're doing a, a car transfer or oh, whatever. Yeah. And I'm going. This is that's all everyone's doing. I'm going to be here for hours. So I walked over to some other kind of says, no, I don't do that. And then I walked back over to where the cards come from, waiting for the guy, hoping that you know there's some way. And he says, now you got to go get that. And the, the, the next counter that I'd gone to, the second one, hoping for some relief, the guy flags me over and he says, yeah, look, I'll help you. And he just goes, click, click, click. Okay, go. <laughs> it's like, it's a, it's a, the system's working because you do all of your registration online. But I also said the system's broken because that one little step shouldn't take so long. It should be just kind of an automatic. Mm, yeah, I mean, you get the... You get the soft one on your yeah. RTA profile. Yeah, exactly. You, so. so I've got it. So they don't, and I, and I said to the guy, do I really need this thing? And he goes, in Dubai, not so much. Oh, as soon as you start getting out of Dubai, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And I went, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, I got it. The United, I remember. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Torque on older vehicles. This is something that. Disappears. Yeah. And, and you know, you might have got your, your Nissan Sunny brand new and you've been driving it now you've got it up to you know half a million kilometers and when you first got it it was a sports car you could be off the lights and you could pass people on the highway like it was no one's business now you're you know you're 15 years in with that nissan sunny it's the love of your life and you need 12, to, 12 newton meters of torque left you need to pass someone on the highway and you, you know everyone knows that you pull out and you gotta go and you you gunner pedal to the metal and it does nothing kind of like my jeep actually uh 
still struggling with the you pull out you got to go yeah so what, what's what's going on there what how does the torque disappear and is there any hope to get some of it back so i guess it's it's down to the old like, start with torque and horsepower they're the two sort of metrics people yeah. used to measure I think no one has a clue what's going on with either basically the torque <laughs> is the, the the amount of effort that you can put into getting the horsepower to move the car okay. so it's to get bit. up and go yeah it's the bit that you feel that throws you in your seat yeah. and it still requires the engine it, like it ultimately is as the engine wears it loses efficiency quite drastically yeah so it wears to the point where the compression doesn't stay as high as it could so you might have started with 12 bar of compression per cylinder and then you might be down to 10 and then nine and then eight and if they do that uniformly and they stay at sort of eight or nine most engines will run without you necessarily having a misfire okay do, do, do engines as they're wearing do they tend to the cylinders do they tend to wear uniformly not yeah. always what okay. will happen is you'll have a defect in <clears throat> sorry in the component on one cylinder like a spark plug or an ignition coil or something yeah which will cause a misfire which will give extra carbon deposits in that cylinder which will then make that cylinder wear quicker or you'll have a an issue where the like you might lose an injector on one cylinder you'll get less and less fuel so it runs very lean so then mm. it burns the valves out etc etc so then it tends to be but you know on a car that's been well maintained you know you'll probably find uniform wear across all cylinders and you'll even on a brand new engine though you do a compression test you wouldn't have uniform. Oh, really? No. Once that, once it's been run for a little while, everything's going to be slightly, slightly. We're not talking. We're talking fractions. Negligibly. Yeah. You know, by the time you've accounted for um, equipment error, it's hard to say. But there's as soon as an engine's wearing itself out, which is the moment you turn the key the first time, then the only place the torque and the horsepower are going is down. Ah, uh, okay. It, it, it is just a fact of it, yeah. and you can over-service them, change the oil more regularly. That might, can, that's going to help me with my torque. You can help with your engine yeah. life, and, yeah. you know, that that is, there's a lot to be said for keeping the oil clean. You, you know, I've just mentioned carbon on a misfire situation where a spark plug fails or something, you don't get a spark on a petrol engine. If you if you keep the oil clean, that carbon gets washed into the oil, and, and, it, and it's all good, yeah, okay. you know. But oftentimes what happens is, the pistons in the cylinders, there's there's the rings, the control rings. Mm. You've got compression rings, one or two or three, and then you've got one called the oil control ring. And the oil control ring basically does what it says it does. It controls the amount of oil left in the cylinder. So that's actually scraping and scratching against the cylinder effectively to keep the oil out of the combustion chamber when it's time to fire. Ah, okay. So when that's scraping carbon off the side, that gets gummed up. So it becomes less and less efficient. So then you end up with more oil in the cylinder. Mm. Starts to burn oil, which creates extra carbon, smoke, and then everything just gets into a vicious cycle and a perfect storm compounds one another. And you very, very quickly wear an engine out by burning oil. Mm. So, so lots of oil changes. Yeah, is gonna the, help the frequent a little bit. oil changes does help with turbocharged engines as well. It's it's quite important. There's a lot of that. turbos out there now. Yeah, because engines are getting smaller. Yeah. And we spoke before, petrol and diesel, they're very, very clean. Yeah. Very, very efficient in relative terms. So if you want to get, I mean, look, you see, you can see how, we've probably mentioned this, but you can see how far we've come in 40 years. If you take a, a Mustang from the 80s with a V8 in it with 250 horsepower or whatever it had, yeah. well, European manufacturers put that out with 1.8 liter engines. Yeah, it's crazy. Four I mean, cylinders, you know. It's insane. So it's 20, 25 years ago, Audi S3s were 1.8 liter 20 valve turbos with 225 horsepower. Yeah. 25 years ago. Um, so even in that 15 year period, there's a massive, massive improvement. And that's just been built upon. So now you, you can get one litre displacement three-cylinder engines with a turbo on that will produce 120 horsepower in a small, like a Ford Fiesta or something like that, yeah. which is perfectly fine. 
yeah. particularly for for anyone living in a European or North American country, like with a with a with a town environment that they're doing a lot of town driving, it's perfectly fine, easy to park, nice to manoeuvre, low on fuel. Mm. So the turbo is the way that that we've achieved that. And there's differences. People obviously a lot of people on the bigger engines they like superchargers. Difference between there's going to be folks who are saying, "Oh yeah, I've heard the heard the term supercharger, heard the term turbocharger." What's what well, are the differences? I mean, they both they both run by the engine, but the supercharger is the direct connection. So when the engine turns, it turns a belt, which we've all mm. we're all familiar with when it comes to um, AC. Yeah, alternators, water pumps. In some cases, you have a drive belt off the engine, off the bottom pulley. Supercharger has no, is no different. It just has a belt that runs a supercharger. So that means as soon as you start to turn the supercharger start to move the engine, the supercharger's turning and compressing air. So there's no lag, which is one of the negatives on a turbo. Not on a modern turbo. To be fair, turbo lag on modern engines is very, very, very minor. Yeah. But a supercharger will kick out at about 3,500 RPM. It can't get any more efficient after that. Whereas a turbocharger will go right through the rev range because the turbocharger uses the exhaust So supercharger is, is pretty, so as you said, about 3,000 RPM. Three to 4,000 RPM. And then after that, so just dog down on okay. any extra power. So it's great at the start. No and finish. they sound great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You get like a G charger off the old VWs <laughs> or even like, you know, they, they sound great. Yeah. But the turbo uses the exhaust gas. So as the exhaust gas passes through the turbo, it's basically like blowing on a fan. Okay. So it turns a fan, which turns a shaft, which turns a fan, which compresses air on the other side. Now that means that the faster the engine goes, the more exhaust gas it's going through, the faster yeah. the turbo spins. So that gets better at the top end. And, you know, you talk about some of the famous turbo-powered cars like an Audi Quattro, horrible amounts of turbo lag on on, <laughs> on them as they were first developed. But variable vane, um, electronic control, all these things that now are on turbos, you get very little lag now. And that's why people have moved away from them. VW for a while in the early 2000s, mid-2000s, had a 1.4-litre four-cylinder engine with a turbocharger and a supercharger on it. And that's where the TSI came from. And they did. I always wondered that. That's a, thank you for that. <laughs> they did. They did a hundred and sixty horsepower version. Now some of the some of the rally and touring car specs that they did were like three hundred and fifty horsepower oh, out right. of a one point four engine with a supercharger that's and insane. a turbo on it. That's but just they, insane. They didn't last very long. We had them in the Golf. I think that was it. In the Mark Five Golf, it was. But even then, we were doing a lot of. Um, a lot of repairs on them. Uh, they were heavy on maintenance, and mm. we'd have things like timing chains, stretching, and stuff yeah. like that. So back in the days, fantastic. timing changes, timing um, chains. Yeah, yeah. But it was a very, very smart system. Turbocharger wouldn't work. It was kind of bypassed until the supercharger wanted to kick out, and then as the supercharger wanted to kick out, the turbocharger would kick in. So there was constant power delivery, and it was nice. very, very, very torquey. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. The, the another thing I want to jump in on just to, for a second is airbags and a friend of ours got in touch with you guys because there was a rattle. She she was, she, you know, just noticed something, you know, maybe there was other things going on with the car, I'm sure as well, but she noticed this rattle, the sound. And, and as a car owner, you notice when your vehicle starts to change and when yeah. it starts to age and you just notice stuff. So she noticed this rattle brought it in you guys started taking a look around and narrowed it down to this is this is possibly an airbag issue and it became even more of an issue when you think about how airbags work do you want to walk us through what that issue was because i'm sure there are people in their vehicles right now who are going yeah Ooh. so i mean one of the problems <sighs> rattles are the bane of any mechanic's existence and the reason for that is you have to drive the car normally to get to hear them. So we used to have a frequency disc. It's no good now because there's no CD players in cars, but it was basically a CD that went in and it played, I think it started at 15 hertz. It went all the way through. So from really low frequency all the way, some of them you couldn't hear, yeah. all the way through to really high, which you couldn't hear. And, well, you could always, t actually, you could always tell one of the old guys was using it in the garage because they'd have it on a high frequency and be just sat there, like, not doing it. And then all those young guys would be like, that, turn it down, because we can hear it still. Yeah. But it'd, like, try and replicate the resonance frequency that the rattle would be at when you were driving. Pretty good. Seven out of ten, maybe eight out oh, of ten would, that's really good. would be able to Yeah, eight out of ten do times that. you hit it with the it. frequency disc. And then we had, and I forget the name of the tool, but it was really smart. It was basically a huge long box, probably as long as this table, that had 
stethoscope basically okay. it was electronically connected to some sensors that you could put where you thought the rattle might be so you'd yeah. put it on various parts of the car and then when it picked up a resonance on that area even if you couldn't hear it or you couldn't pinpoint it it would flag so you'd have it on the stethoscope and well but it'd flag it so you get back from your road test and it'd say sensor three so you go to sensor three, then you'd know the area you're looking at, and then you'd put the sensors yeah. in that area. And it was really smart. Like that was a yeah. special tool that Volkswagen made us have. And but the problem is, a rattle, especially when it's in the front on the driver's side, is very difficult to pinpoint because if, if yeah. it's on the passenger or the rear, while you're driving, someone else can be looking, right. or while someone else is driving, you can yeah. be looking. But when it's where you are, you can't have anyone sat on your lap. Or in the footwell while you're driving it, mm. because yeah, that's not safe. It's just not going to work. So it's very difficult to to pinpoint. And so but, this this rattle with this airbag was on the driver's side. Yeah, and it was the driver's airbag. So we got a whole bunch. So those are in the steering wheel. You got yeah. a whole bunch of issues with the steering wheel and airbags. Yeah. So we we, and, and, we include, including my favorite, the clock spring. Yeah. Because there's lots of issues with those. Yeah. So term differently, spiral cassette, slip ring, as we'd have called it. And clock spring basically it's a it's a ribbon of wire which is spirally coiled around the center. So it allows the steering wheel to turn but still have electrical connection to the yeah. horn or the right. buttons on the steering wheel more often now and the airbag. So she came in, diagnosed she came in with a rattle in the steering wheel. Yeah, and then once we'd realized that was where it was from, we took the airbag off to confirm, drove it without the airbag rattles disappeared so then we tried to pack the mounting points out of the app now we have to be very careful with an airbag because if we make any modification to it not only one could it ignite while we're doing that but two yeah. it might not go off when needed and then how would we know that wasn't something that we'd done to cause right. that because you don't know if an airbag's going to work it's no, pretty that, that, sure that it will but yeah. you don't know but they're and they've got a little explosive charge in them because that's what this makes them work problem. as well so they have a de- igniter there's a crash sensor that detects an impact. You have other sensors now in vehicles. There's, there's a lot of other sensors in vehicles, but there's a crash sensor that will de- detect an impact in a certain position, which will then send a signal to the igniter to ignite the airbag, which will then expand at a ridiculously fast speed. Yeah, but smash into your face. Now, it's going to help you in a, a collision, but it does smash yeah, into yeah. your face. Yeah, I mean, the ones where the, ones where the pad splits and yeah. the bag comes out, they're pretty painless but there are some of them where the where the the actual pad on the front will come off and that's hitting you in the face yeah it nails you breaks your nose yeah so and it's also why it's very important that you should take time to either read the manual in your vehicle or find the manual for your vehicle online and understand how to position yourself as the driver because it might be counterintuitive because it might not be how you feel comfortable driving yeah. But to have your arms in the right position with the right amount of distance between your shoulder and the steering wheel, have the right kind of bend in your arm, have your head at the right height with the headrest at the right place. It's very important because what you might find is if you sit too high because you like the view or you sit too low because you feel like you look cool, you'll get an airbag going off and hitting the top of your head or hitting your throat. Yeah. Where actually it's supposed to be there for your face to cushion the whole blow as you go right. into them. So something we don't think about. Because you got yeah, the, yeah, you got you the recline it, drivers. Yeah. And, and the purpose of that headrest, because a lot of times people get into vehicles and they get them all sorted out, the mirrors, the chair, the seat, you know, the back. And it's like, hold on, got to make sure the headrest is in the right position because it's not just for resting. Mm. If that airbag goes off, which, you know, and I think 99% of the time they don't, but if you were that 1% because you're in that, uh, un, you know, no one plans a no, collision. Exactly, yeah. You're in that 1% of time. You want to make sure that everything is... Yeah, the headrest will stop you getting whiplash in, yeah. in an event of being rear-ended. And, and the problem is, in most collisions, if you hit in the back of somebody for your airbag to go off, somebody's then going into the back of you. Yeah. And you're not necessarily going to be that worried about it at the time because you just hit the car on the fr- in front yeah. of you. But at the point of you stopping instantly and then being hit from behind, your head's going to snap back, and that's whiplash. And yeah. that can that can cause brain injury, actually. So yeah, yeah. Concussion concussions, from yeah, for sure. I think this is, this is interesting. You took out You took out the airbag. You then thought, okay, we're going to see if we can pack it because well, of this rattling. we thought rattling. maybe where it mounts on the springs because they're spring-loaded. Right. We thought maybe where it mounts on there, we could actually make it a bit tighter. No. But no, I mean, so we're, did, we've got to go with it. What with did you so what did you come to determine is the issue with so the rattle? we obviously can't take it apart. No. 
and we've had fun with airbags before me and DJ cause when we used to change them under warranty in the UK for VW you weren't allowed to put them on a boat as an explosive with a known default right. defect sorry so you without ignite. igniting them so we'd have to ignite them to send them back so we had a crash test teddy that we used to uh, used to strap to it and then get it out on the side of the building on the bank send it up and sometimes you go that high that you can't actually wow see them wow like where have they gone yeah, and they're just come flying back down but yeah um so we get guys here we take steering wheels and airbags out all the time and when we see them laid down face down it's frightening and, and, and it's a lack of appreciation like our service managers that we've had while we were in vw it's quite stable for a while but then we got through a few never had a problem with us doing it we had to do it anyway yeah but they never had a problem with us actually setting it off that way because it allowed any apprentice or anyone that wasn't aware of this is what can happen if you leave it the wrong way around. Because you, with an airbag, static charge oh, yeah. could set it off. You never think of that. So if you take a multimeter, for example, yeah. on a multimeter, if we've had anyone that's ever used one, you can test resistance of a circuit, the ohms rating of a circuit. And to do that, it puts a very, very small current. Using the internal battery, it puts a very small current through one wire and waits to receive it yeah. on the other wire. And depending on what's happened to the current, it calculates the resistance. So if you test an airbag's resistance, which most of the time a fault on an airbag will be a resistance, mm. if you test an airbag's resistance with a multimeter, the potential is that you will then ignite it because you're giving it a current, Shh. which is sufficient enough oh, to do man. such a thing. That's frightening. Yeah, and also on airbags, this is just one for anyone that's never come across this, and you wouldn't know you'd come across it until you either listen to your trainer or you'd experienced it in the worst case. If you get a fault on an airbag that says short to live, stored in the memory, do not erase it. <laughs> because mm. what will happen is when you erase it, the circuit will be activated again, and it will send a test current to it, and if it's short-circuited to the live side, it will ignite it. Our master tech at VW... He was a licensed tech at the time, which is the top. You can't get beyond that. In general terms, you can be brand model specific, but he was the top of the top. He had a, one of our receptionists had a Mark IV Golf and it had a short to life fault in it, but he didn't check that it was a short to life fault. Oh, he no. just read all the faults and cleared yeah. it. Then when it and all of the seat airbag, the driver's airbag, all went. and that is a noise in the workshop. That is a real, that is a noise. Prop, and I mean, dealer name, the receptionist, she was good with her sewing machine and she made herself a seat cover and repaired it but the steering wheel one needed to be replaced but anyway back to this one with the rattle our worry was that inside there one of the soldered joints for either the igniter or the actual connection to the igniter or out of the igniter to the end somewhere there's something that's either a piece of solder or something's come loose and it's rattling around now Again, we don't want any static electricity getting created. We don't yeah. want any kind of, yeah. you know, you just can't take it. It's an explosive. It is yeah, an explosive. Absolutely, now, absolutely. If you're sat in a car and the airbags go off, it's going to deafen you yeah. for a split second. You know, it's not a nice experience, but it's not necessarily going to hurt you because you've had an accident. If you're driving a car not having had an accident and then the airbag goes off just for no reason you're going to have a serious accident with no airbag. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't... And I'm sure there's been people do that. I'm sure there's lunatics out there that jump off buildings without parachutes, isn't there? But there'll be people that have probably driven around and had an airbag go off on them without it wanting to go off on them. And there'll have been people that have seen what it's like for that to happen and made it happen. But yeah. that's got to be one of the most... that That's got to be more frightening than even having a tyre blow out at motorway yeah. speed like if you're going Absolutely. motorway speeding it because also there's a powder in the airbag so the airbag goes off but there's a powder in there now sometimes that leaks out <laughs> so it's dusty you can't see yeah there's obviously all of the dust on the components like right. the dashboard has got an airbag on the passenger yeah. side on the driver's side all of the dust that you didn't think was necessarily there that's gone because it's something's accelerated from yeah. zero to a million in a split second so all the dust with the shock and everything else, plus the noise, plus the fact that it's in your face you can't see, yeah. plus the fact that if it's thrown anything off the pad at you, yeah, you know, like for yourself wearing glasses, if it's oh. thrown something at you, your glasses have come off. Like that's just an extra layer of complexity yeah. to a situation yeah. that you didn't need at 100 kilometers an hour on the motorway. Man. So at the end yeah. of the day, things rattling, you tried to do what you could do. It's a replacement. 
Yeah, yeah, and there's no, <sighs> there's no sort of other option unless yeah. you're going to drive around without an airbag in, which people do. Classic yeah. cars don't have them, but then you're going to have a warning light on. Yeah, and it's got an airbag for a reason, you know. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Hey, Glenn, you know what? We're going to we're gonna wrap up for another show. This was a lot of fun. Glenn Power, PowerWorks Garage. I'm James Pikeway. We've been talking cars. If you've got any questions you want to fire through to us, please do. It's potaholics with a K at gmail.com. Fire your questions through. We'll get them on the show. We'll talk about it. Got some observations. Got it. Just got anything you want to share. Potaholics with a K at gmail.com. And we'll get it. Uh, we'll get back to you. Thank you very much for listening. Glenn, thank you as thank always. You. We'll do it all again real soon. 